Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part seven of the Audacity Accelerator course. In this part, you're gonna learn how to record your vocals, whether that's for speech, for a podcast, or your vocals for music. You'll learn the process in this video. So you've got your mic set up. It's bringing in audio into Audacity. If it's not yet, then it's worth taking a look at the previous video of how to set up either a USB microphone or a microphone with an audio interface, whichever you're using. I'll leave links in the description below and on screen. I'm gonna show you how to get the best sound possible out of your vocals. And the first step is getting your room and your positioning right. So let's head over there and I'll show you how to get set up with your mic. So here we are with our condenser microphone. It's really important that we get positioned correctly ourselves and the microphone. It makes a huge difference on the sound that you're gonna be capturing. Firstly, if you're recording at home and not in a professional studio, you want to be recording in a room with the least amount of natural reverb, ideally. In a lot of professional studios, the room will have a, a kind of ambience that's tuned to sound really nice and rich. Um, at home, that's not gonna be the case for, for most of you. So if you have the choice, you wanna pick the room that has the least amount of natural ambience. The natural reflections that you get bouncing off the walls that go back into the microphone and make for a poor quality recording. So go for a small room if you can with lots of soft furnishings. Um, an open plan kitchen diner is not what you wanna be recording in if you can avoid it. You might have the budget for a little bit of acoustic treatment like you see behind me, but even if you don't, things like uh, thick blankets, um, beds, sofas, anything like that in your room, especially behind the microphone where the reflections are gonna be bouncing back and back and go, going back into your microphone. Um, and also in front of the microphone. The acoustics of the room are especially important if you're recording vocals and particularly important if you're using a condenser microphone like the mic that we've got here, the AT2020. Condenser microphones can make for some very detailed recordings which work very well for sung vocals. Um, if you don't have the right room for this though, or if you're just recording dialogue, say for a podcast, then you might consider using a dynamic mic instead. They pick up less room sound, um, they give a lot more of a uh, more intimate recording. A dynamic microphone would be something like this Rode M1 and that's something like that's going to pick up very little of the room sound so you don't need to worry as much um, when it comes to the acoustic treatment and things like that. But whichever microphone you're going to be using the setup is going to be pretty much the same whether you're standing up to perform or you're sitting down in front of your computer to record some dialogue the setup is going to be pretty much the same. So you're going to want the mic on a proper mic stand to separate it from the floor or the desk or a boom arm connected to the desk can work as long as you've got one of these these cradles with the elastic on. It separates it from the vibrations and any taps on the desk that you might be making. Also it's vital that you get one of these pop filters. What they do is prevent the p, p the plosives from getting through. You see, if, if I if I record a P sound without the pop filter, p, 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 you get that kind of windiness, which can really be quite intrusive to the listener. Um, but with with this pop filter in front, which you can get for very low cost, p, 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 it's all but gone. And then again, whichever microphone you're using, you don't want to get too close. If you get too close to the microphone, it can cause what is called the proximity effect, where you get a lot of bass build up and, and it makes for a poor quality recording. So give yourself a good rule of thumb is at least two hands. You can make a fist or a hand um, sort of six inches or so from your mouth and the microphone make sure that your your mouth is actually pointing to the microphone. I find that a lot of podcasters will sit there with the mic on their desk and they'll be sitting sort of six inches over the microphone talking over it, but you wanna make sure you've got that direct recording like that. I mean, you can hear probably on the, the recording now the difference it makes. But ultimately, don't let any of this stop you from getting your music or your word out there, even if you can't afford all the gear straight away. Best to just get started, get practicing, get to know the sound of your microphone and your room. So this is plugged into my interface. That's what you're gonna to wanna to do. You're gonna to wanna to plug the microphone with an XLR cable into your audio interface, or if it's a USB microphone, you're gonna be plugging in to your USB port. If, it, if you are recording through an audio interface, you're gonna to wanna to hit that phantom power button if you're recording with a condenser microphone because they need phantom power to work. But if you're using a USB microphone, that will have it built in 
Um, you get the power from the USB cable. If you're using a dynamic microphone, you won't need phantom power at all. So that's all plugged in. We're gonna take a look at the Audacity session now. I'm gonna show you what settings you'll need and the levels to record at and everything like that, what you'll be seeing in the project window in Audacity. Let's head over. So here we are set up in front of Audacity with the microphone. I've swapped over to the dynamic mic um, just so you can hear the difference between the two. And also as I'm sitting at the desk, this is normally the kind of position I'll be taking when recording with a dynamic mic for a podcast or voiceover, for example. So it should be all plugged in now to your interface. Um, we've got the pop filter there, leaving a few inches between myself and the mic. The sound is a lot more intimate, uh, a little bit warmer and things like that. So it's great for, again, rooms that aren't quite perfect for recording in. Now you should see some signal in your interface uh, showing that there's some audio coming through. And if you've got Audacity all set up correctly, um, then you should be able to just hit record and record some audio. But I'm just gonna go over the settings again. If you don't already have your audio interface set up in Audacity, I'll leave a link on the screen now for part five where I go over how to do that. But just a quick overview, if you take a look on the device toolbar here, you're gonna want your audio interface um, next to that mic icon set, so I'm using my Scarlett Focusrite interface. Uh, then leave it at um, one mono if you're just recording one microphone. And then your output with the speaker icon, again, you're gonna wanna find your interface. Um, just be careful if you've got more than one instance of your interface, for example, you're using a, uh, I don't know, a Behringer interface and it, and it says um, Behringer a couple of times on the list. Have a look for something that says line in for the recording and line out for the playback. Um, you might have something like loop back or, or some other things like that on there. So we've got a pop filter set up, nice and clear sound. If we just hit record, then we can start seeing some signal and you can start recording your vocals. Um, we can see up the top there, it's showing you how loud, uh, how much level is, is coming into the system. Um, you don't want this anywhere near zero because that's when you're going to get this nasty clipping noise, which just sounds horrible. Um, don't worry too much about having it too low um, because you can always turn up after the fact. But normally I try and hover around um, peaking up, up to around the sort of minus 12, minus 10 dB mark. So if you just talk or sing or, or whatever you're doing as you normally would, um, as loud as you're going to go basically for, for your recording, then and, and make sure that that's not going anywhere near the zero using your... Uh, input knob on your interface, then you can make sure that you're not going to be hitting that clipping mark at the top there during your recording and you don't have to worry about it. Make sure that you're also not clipping on the interface itself because even though if, even though it's not clipping on here, you might find that the red light's going off on your interface depending on, on the model of interface you have and then you'll have to turn down on there. You can also turn your input down after the fact just on the audacity side using this recording volume meter here you can you can see it go down there in volume but we're going to leave that at the top and just use the interface um, to to adjust the level and then hitting stop or the space bar finishes up your recording and then we can listen back you can also turn your input down after the fact just on the audacity side really high quality professional sounding recording this is a rode m1 microphone it only cost cost me about 60 pounds maybe about 80 dollars or so um and this is going to work just fine whatever room you're in you could even sing into this it's going to be it's not as detailed um uh, you don't have quite the clarity of a condenser microphone but with a bit of eqing which we'll go over in a later video it's just fine um and especially if you're on a budget or in a, a not ideal situation for recording i'll just go over a couple of quick shortcuts that are going to help speed things up as well for you when you're recording if you just press r it will, all, it will record for you, so you don't have to go into the the, um, the transport bar and then hit, hit the record button. You can just press R and then space to stop. Um, or if you hold shift and press R, you will do a punch in or record new track. If you hold shift, you'll see that that, that icon's changed. You can also turn- And it's gonna record on a separate track instead. So if you're overdubbing, um, if you want to record two separate voices or, or, you know, do some backing vocals, then hitting that shift record is a quick way of going back to the beginning and, and recording a new track. You'll then probably want to make it a few tweaks with some EQ and compression to make it sound as best, as good as possible. Maybe do a bit of editing and then exporting it to a WAV file or an MP3. We'll be going over those things in the later videos. 
Now you should have some awesome vocals recorded. Don't forget to hit file and save to save your project so you don't lose anything. In the next part, we're gonna be going over how to record electric guitar. In future parts, I'll be showing you how to record over a backing track, how to mix and edit your audio and everything else you need to know. So hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you're the first to know when each video is out. Leave a like if this video helped you and let me know in the comments section below, what are you recording into Audacity today? And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part eight.